Hello, fans of Geometric Methods. Uh, I'm pretty sure the point of this tutorial is that there is no starting point whatsoever. Um, but there are a few guidelines that we like to adhere to at PolyShells, and I'll tell you about those here. So let's get into the show. Let me explain what's happening here. So I started with the polygon on the base plane. Here it's just a square. Uh, and the way you do that is you drop down an A base point or some point. It could be at the origin of the axis, which I did here. And then a second point, and then you draw a regular polygon. And it is the second point that is uh, adjustable. You can rapidly change the size of the squares. At this point, I wasn't really sure what to do. I uh, just wanted to try something wildly different. And that's the point of this lesson. I think you could try anything you want. It's all play in the beginning. Then it gets all disciplined in the middle. And then it gets all play at the end again. So what I did was I put a sphere around uh, the A base corner. And it doesn't really matter what the size of the sphere is and another sphere on the B base corner and again I don't know what the sizes are yet so I'm just playing around and I put a point on the surface of the A sphere and a point on the surface of the B sphere and then I made lines going through those points on the surface of the spheres through the original corner. So let me see if I could get that going here really quick. Uh, let me see here. So here's the base polygon. A couple of, just a couple of spheres, uh, really, uh, oops. Uh, well, I did adjust the lines, the, the size, excuse me. Uh, so, here, okay, here's one line. Here's a line through the centroid. Let me hide that one, and here's another line. Okay, so what I did was I put these points on that line, and I called them uh, slant A and slant B. And... The nice thing about that is that I thought it might give me some control. I'm not sure it's a great idea, but just playing with that. Okay, so that's the idea here is that there's a sphere. Uh, and then there's a, a, a point on, on that which um, is different than the, the, the slanty one. I just dropped another point on that line. And again, everything changes, right? Everything changes. That's the slanty line, and uh, this is the, here it is. So again, everything rapidly changes. So what you're looking for is something super simple. So right now I have just a couple of parameters. Um, okay, so then I put um, the three spheres on the corners, sphere A, sphere B, and sphere C. Let me zoom out a little bit. Sphere C is linked to this centroid point. All right. And then the other, uh, the other ones are linked to those previously mentioned points. And then these are the tilties or the slanties, okay? So now what I'm looking for is, as we like to do, and you could see what I'm looking for right there, the intersections, you can see them popping up here. Let me hide these spheres. I'm looking for the intersections of these points. Um, so let me go back to the slideshow here. Uh, so I put a sphere on the centroidal axis, which is vertical, and then a sphere centered on A on this line that is adjusted by slant A and centered on B, which is uh, a line adjusted by slant B. So I guess there's more than three parameters. I call this only three parameters because a, the, the position of A is a parameter, the position of B and the slants 
But for now, let's try to keep it simple. The whole goal here is to get circular intersections between the spheres. Uh, name everything super carefully. So circle center A is the intersection of the sphere on the center with the sphere on A. Circle center B is the intersection of the sphere in the center with the sphere on B. Okay, so far so good. Then uh, I just wanted to mirror this. I, I thought, let's just keep it. I don't want to make two more axes. I could if I wanted to. Two more uh, sliding points, two more slanty points, but I just mirrored it. Uh, one, so one of the things that we always try to do is just try to keep it as simple as possible. Uh, use symmetry where, where you can, and then literally play around. And then I was very happy when I saw this. I, I didn't know what I was going to expect, and, and I call this discipline and play as Eduardo Toroja also called it. Now find these intersections. They start to look structural to me, and that's something up to you how you want to decide to do that. Uh, so I found the level one intersections, and I called it A level one, B level one, C level one, and D level one, and then the level two intersections. Again, I don't know what the form is going to look like, but I'm looking for something that is promising uh, that looks like a uh, piece of architecture, at least with a lowercase a right now. Now uh, we need to be disciplined, okay? This is the part where your polytechnic training really has to kick in. Up to this point, it's just goofing around, right? Literally, that's the point of this lesson, is just goofing around. Now it's discipline time. Here we need to be very, very careful and very, very diligent before we move any of these parameters too much because you need to sequentially stabilize the points. And I thought this was a completely reasonable starting point to take the level one points and lock them to the base with a strut. You could think of something else if you want, but I think that's a reasonable point. A reasonable point. Another reasonable idea would just be to drop a vertical through all these points and find, you know, where they land on the ground plane. That's completely reasonable too. Then you'd have vertical columns. Yeah, what's wrong with vertical columns? Okay, uh, I rapidly realized that I'm probably going to need some more base points, just as I alluded to here. Maybe dropping a vertical would have been better. Uh, but I chose to not uh, do that. Uh, you could do that. I might do that in another tutorial. What I chose to do is add a few more points without adding any new parameters. That's one of the ideas here. Adding complexity via simplicity. So what I did was I inscribed a circle around the original polygon. And then I simply drew north, south, and east, west axes, which align with the global Cartesian coordinates. And then I got four more points. Now I'm not adding floating points. That's why these are green big points. They're on the ground. They are intimately linked to the size of the polygon. I don't have to stabilize them. I'm going to use them as landing points. And now you, I think you could see what happens. It becomes really, really quick to stabilize the A level, uh, the level one uh, points. So A level one, B level one, C level one, and D level one all have a simple tripod. Nothing special about that. And in fact, I'm not even really that crazy about it. I, I kind of think my, my uh, other idea of just dropping those down as verticals might have been better. But let's just run with this. Um, be careful, be methodical, uh, yet be creative. Now we have four more uh, floating nodes, so let's just stabilize those, and, that, and that's easy peasy mac and cheesy at this point. Uh, you have, uh, let's just start with a level two. Uh, you could start anywhere you want, but I just started there because I'm a linear sort of person. I stabilized a level two point because these are as good as ground. They are unconditionally stable, the level one points. Uh, so I use three struts to stabilize that point. Now three more struts to stabilize B, then three more to C, three more to D. And you really don't have to follow that order. I just 
did uh, for the purposes of this tutorial. So now I stabilized uh, B level two, then C level two and D level two. You other choices exist here, of course. Um, you know, you could do whatever you want. Oh, my thing got really wonky here. Let me open this up again here. Uh, so uh, I got something, uh, let me just spin it around here for you and you could see what's happening. Uh, based on that original polygon, nothing, nothing magical about that polygon. It was just a polygon with that circle inscribed around the polygon, okay? Um, so let's go back to the PowerPoint. Uh, what I do suggest is this, take a snip of the radii that seem to work because as you just saw in, uh, with my other one, as soon as you get too wild, uh, you'll, you'll forget where you were. And I'm always trying to uh, avoid X's, uh, or what I mean, crossing of these diagonals. Uh, you could see the level one points going down to the base circle. Uh, they do not cross each other. Um, you could, I did that in the previous lesson where they did cross each other, but it's something to be avoided. Okay. Um, then playtime begins. Once you have it stabilized, then go nuts and start moving the radii. I like to snip these out just so I can remember them if they look promising. Look at them from different views. Let's do 59, 53, and 33. Uh, what did I say? 59. That doesn't really matter. 59, 53, and 33. You know, something like that. It doesn't really matter, but um, you get, you know, sort of architectural shapes, perhaps. Uh, maybe that's a little too wide. You could tweak this slowly. You know, kind of, maybe that's a little, uh, you know. Um, have fun with it, uh, but avoid these X's, right? I don't like that. There we go. Okay, so something like that, perhaps. Um, then uh, 3D print them. Uh, we have a lot of 3D printers here at Polyshells LLC. Headquarters, come by. We'll give you some coffee and, and you could 3D print. Um, so this is looking interesting to me now. I um, wonder what my friend Daniel Leviskin would think about this one. Or this one. Lots of uh, ideas. And again, if you're Daniel Liebeskin, you don't need this technique at all. You can just maybe do it, right? But if you're a mere mortal like the rest of us, I think having a workflow where you're using some metho methodology that is fairly rigorous and constrained yet infinitely malleable. Like, so for instance, now watch what I mean by infinitely malleable. So for instance, B base, you know, I could just change B base. That's my base of my uh, original footprint and everything changes, right? Absolutely everything changes. Uh, maybe for better, you know, that actually looks a lot better than what I just had before. Uh, but we're in the play mode again. And don't forget the slanty points too. Uh, a, where is A, let's see here. Where are you? I don't see you. Uh, and B, there you are. There's B. B was that one sliding along that line, remember? And then uh, centroid one. Oops, no, that's the base. Centroid one infinitely malleable. Um, let me get my other lines here because I'd like to play with that before we end the show. I can't find my point. Oh, there it is. Here it is. All right. There's A. Let me zoom out a little. So that's that um, 
point on A. This is the point on B. You know, that's really terrific, I think. And this is the point on the centroidal axis. Ooh, ooh, that surprises me. I'm gonna save that. And that's the feeling that I want everybody to have. I want them to say, ooh, like look at that. That's super interesting, right? It looks like Helmut Jean. Whoa, I like that one. I'm gonna save that one. All right, well, anyway, uh, I, I'm gonna call that Helmut from my friend Helmut here. Um, anyway, I really like it. I'm hoping you're loving it. I wanna see what you do because Anything is a valid starting point. Good luck.